Today we are reading the story about the echidna. It looks like echidna, but actually the ch is the k sound, so you pronounce that echidna. The Weird and Wonderful Echidna by Mike Jung. Australia is home to some of the most unique animals on earth. Kangaroos, koalas live here. A giant bird called the emu does too. All of the creatures that live in Australia, the echidna is one of the strangest. This small creature makes its home in Australia and also on the island of New Guinea. The echidna is also known by its common name, the spiny anteater. The name describes two of the echidna's amazing traits. All the echidnas have spines. Some eat ants, but those are only two of the traits of the strange and wonderful creature. If you met an echidna, you might have a hard time figuring out what kind of animal it is. To begin with, the echidna has a beak but it doesn't have feathers and it doesn't fly, so it's not a bird. Hmm, that's unusual. I would have thought it was a bird with a beak. The echidna lays soft eggs like a snake does, but the echidna is not a reptile. The echidna is a mammal. And that's unusual because most mammals do not lay eggs. The echidna belongs to a group of mammals known as monotremes. They are also, oh, they are the only ant mammals on earth that lay eggs. There are only two kinds of monotremes. One is the echidna and the other is the platypus. Monotremes have lived on earth longer than any other mammals. Several adaptions have helped them to thrive. So if you look up at the uh, comprehension, it says highlight evidence that you would include in a mental summary to clarify your understanding. So what would you highlight in there to help you understand more about the echidna? And some of the vocabulary words that we read are unique, which means it's very unusual, and that is true. Most animals that have a beak are a bird. So it's unlike anything else. Monotremes are animals that are mammals, but they lay eggs. And adaptions are changes that animals make, a plant or animal, that better suits them for their environment. The echidna's beak is a rare feature among mammals. It also, it's also a fabulously adapted tool for finding food. Echidnas live in the forested areas and feed on insects, worms, and other tiny creatures. An echidna's beak is long and pointy. However, the beak doesn't have two halves that open like a bird's beak. Instead, the echidna uses its beak as a digging tool. It pokes and prods to find its prey. The echidna's beak is tough. In fact, it's strong enough to break open a rotten log or dig into the soil in search of a tasty meal. So its beak is kind of like a shovel. The most amazing thing about an echidna's beak is something you can't see. The beak has sensors inside it. The sensors detect electrical signals given off by living creatures. That means an echidna can locate prey without seeing, hearing, or touching it. It's kind of of a mammal superpower. It's almost like it has radar in its beak. That is amazing. So in the synthesize, it says underlying facts that give important information about the echidna and how it finds its prey. An echidna's mouth is small and it has no teeth. The echidna uses its beak to crush a worm or insect into tiny pieces. It takes the pieces into its mouth and swallows them. Scientists classify echidnas according to the beak length. There are short-beaked echidnas and long-beaked echidnas. The one species of short-beaked echidna lives throughout Australia and in New Guinea. The three species of long the, the three species of long beaked echidna are found exclusively on the island of New Guinea. If you were to see an echidna in person, the first thing you might notice is its coat of spines. The spines are short and hollow. They are made of keratin, the same material that makes up your hair and fingernails. Pretty amazing. 
and this part of the story highlight details that combine with your background knowledge to improve your comprehension. So again, highlight some details that show you the unique ability of an echidna. And it says the colors of the echidna's fur and spines help it to blend in its surroundings. So it's kind of like camouflage, so it can hide. And echidna spines are like a coat of armor. They protect the echidna from the predators, such as the dingo, a kind of wild dog. When a predator approaches, an echidna rolls itself up into a ball. The ball appears to be nothing but spines. The predators usually think twice before chomping down. You wouldn't want to get a bunch of spines in your mouth. In addition, the echidna spines play another important role. They serve as camouflage to help the animal hide from its predators. The spines are colored with sections of white and black and brown. The spines blend well with the surrounding colors of the rocks and soil and dead leaves. Like other mammals, the echidna also has fur, though some echidnas are furrier than others. The amount of fur depends upon where the echidnas live. The echidnas occupy a range of habitats, from the chillier regions of Australia to the warmer, drier places in New Guinea. The ones in colder areas tend to have more fur than those in warmer climates. They have less. The strong, sharp spines of the echidna help it keep it safe from its predators. So the echidna is definitely an amazing mammal. It can live in different um, climates. It can also protect itself. It can hide. And its beak is definitely amazing. What a special animal. If you think an echidna's beak and spines are incredible, wait until you see its tongue. The echidna's tongue is simply an amazing tool. And if you look at the picture, look how long its tongue is. And it's perfectly adapted to capture the kinds of prey the echidna needs. There are two different kinds of echidna tongues. That's because different kinds of echidnas eat different kinds of food. One type of echidna has a long, sticky tongue. The other type has a short tongue that's covered with hooks. It may seem backward, but the short-beaked echidna has a long, sticky tongue. The tongue is extremely flexible, which means it can bend in different ways. It's great for grabbing ants, termites, and other tiny prey. The short-beaked echidna is expert at flicking its tongue into the nooks and crannies where those animals live. The long-beaked echidna doesn't eat ants at all. In fact, Worms are its only prey, but its tongue is perfectly adapted for worm catching. The long beak echidna probes the soil with its beak. When it finds a worm, it sticks out its tongue. The tiny hooks on the tongue hook into the earthworm. The echidna then pulls its tongue back into its mouth and the earthworm becomes lunch. That's amazing. When it comes to predators, the echidna has another secret weapon, its claws. When an echidna is startled or attacked, it hides by doing something no other mam mammal in the world can do. It digs itself straight down into the ground. How does the echidna pull off this trick? The claws play a big role. Tough and heavy, they can move a lot of dirt in a short amount of time. Other adaptions help the claws do their job. First of all, the echidna has strong skeleton. Second, the echidna might be small, but it's incredibly muscular. Those muscles can pull hard to dig very fast. When a predator approaches, the claws, skeleton, and muscles of the echidna go to work. In seconds, the small mammal can burrow almost completely into the earth. Once the echidna is dug in, its camouflage spines make it very hard to see. And because the only part that's exposed is spines, many predators will pass it by. And of course they would, because if they bit it, they would get spines in their mouth. That's just amazing. So in this highlighting part here, I would again highlight some of the things in here that are unique about the echidna and its tongue. What again, an amazing animal.
What's the echidna's most amazing adapt adaptation? Some people might think it's the beak. Others might vote for the spines or the echidna's digging ability. But the echidna has another amazing adaptation that you can't see. It's a special layer of muscle that wraps around the echidna's whole body. This muscular layer makes the echidna's body very strong. And even more important, it allows the echidna to change its shape. It can roll itself in, up into a ball, or it can flatten itself to the thickness of a spiny pancake. The extreme flexibility comes in handy. The echidna can squish itself flat to squeeze into hi a hiding spot when a predator lurks. It can turn itself into a ball of spines to protect itself from a hungry dingo. And if you don't know what a dingo is, that is a dog in Australia, most common to Australia, that is, it's kind of like a wild dog and it's one of the echidna's predators. Next page, the echidna has one more unique feature. The echidna's body temperature is about 85 to 89 degrees Fahrenheit. In case you were wondering, your own body temperature is a toasty 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That means the echidna has a lower body temperature than any other mammal. Scientists think that a cool body temperature might help the echidna live longer. Surprisingly, echidnas live as long as 45 years in the wild. Other small mammals don't live nearly as long. When they need to, echidnas can turn down their body temperature even lower than normal. When they do this, all their body functions such as breathing, heart rate, and digestion slow down too. This state is called torpor, which is a bit like hibernation. When the torpor, when in torpor, the echidna uses less energy, so it needs less food. This is useful during the winter when prey is harder to find. It's also helpful during times of crisis, such as when a forest fire occurs. Scientists think that this trait is one reason that the echidna has managed to survive, but it's just one of the adaptations that makes the tiny spiny echidna one of the most amazing creatures on earth. And I would agree with that. The echidna has so many things to protect it and so many ways for it to get food and the fact that it can even slow its body down to help it live longer. What an amazing animal. I hope you enjoyed the story about the echidna and its truly amazing traits. Our next story that we're going to read is The Very Peculiar Platypus by Wade Hudson. This is another mammal that is extremely rare, but it's also very unusual, much like the echidna that we just read about. And if you notice on the picture of the platypus, you will see a bill Right down here, you can tell it has a bill just like a duck. So a lot of times they're called a duck-billed platypus. In the late 1700s, British scientists got their first glimpse of a platypus, or rather they received a platypus specimen that someone had sent from Australia. At first, they thought it was a joke. It looked as if someone had stitched a duck's bill and webbed feet to the skin of an otter or a beaver. The platypus does look as if there, it were put together by a mad scientist. However, its seemingly strange collection of features and adaptation helps the platypus to survive in its Australian home. A most unlikely mammal. The platypus is a mammal just like a mouse or a dog. 